Hey, it's Steve Chase here. We're going to look at how categories work using QuickBooks Online. So the, the first thing that you might come across is when you create a product or service in your QuickBooks, it's going to ask you for a category where it says choose a category. And it is completely optional. However, if you've got a lot of uh, invoice items and products, services items that you sell, you might consider working with categories. Now, the reason for this video is that I was asked three times in the last year or so, Steve, how do you make an item on the invoice disappear? I, I don't want to see it. Um, and we try to inactivate it and it says, sorry, you can't do it. This item is connected to something or it, there's a few in there that you can't inactivate because bottom line is it's basically you have to have at least one or two products and services that come with QuickBooks. Um, so I got me, it got me to thinking, well, uh, let's figure out a way to just do a workaround to get rid of those and put them at the very bottom of the list. So when you're creating an invoice and you click the drop down to select the product or service, the one that you never want to see is at the very bottom. And so I discovered you can do that by creating categories and you have to think about how you name the categories because if you have three categories and one starts with the letter A, another one starts with the letter G, another one starts with the letter Z, as in zebra, uh, you, you'll get those at the very bottom. So the, the goal is to create a category that's kind of just a, uh, a Z category. So that way, if everything has a category, your particular service or product that you don't want to see in the invoice item list when you create an invoice or sales tree is at the bottom. So let me get at it and show you some categories. And also a benefit is you can create reports and do a sales by product um, summary and it will automatically subtotal the categories, the products and items that have been in service for that particular time frame of the report that you run. I'm in my demo account. The first thing we'll do is we'll click the gear icon to discover our products and services. And here we go here. Okay. Um, when you create a new product or service, you get to choose what type of account it's going to be. And then after you name it and apply the applicable things, you'll see a, dis a category. And so a category is optional. If you don't see any categories here, you'll have the ability to add them on the fly. I'm going to cancel that for that right there. The other way to find your category list is to click the gear icon, all list, and you'll see right here, you've got product categories. Now you can have a, a, a subcategory as well. Um, when you create a category here, you'll see that you can put it as a subcategory within one. So I'm gonna just gonna create some categories real quick here. A, B, and let's go with Z. Okay, so these are my categories. And now let's start to put some of the categories together. Okay, so to the product services. So back to the product service and then select the, the gear icon here products and services. Okay. First of all, I'm going to show you real quick. If I go into the invoice items list, this is how it appears right now. You can see it's in alphabetical order based on there's, there's no categories here at all. This training DVDs right here just basically is the description. So you can see the default text. If I have a default text, it populates there. So that's not the category here, even though it looks like it might be. All right, so let's bring in, I'm going to put in uh, consulting. I'm going to click edit and I'm going to put it in category A. Save and close. Okay. And then you can see the little A right below it. Okay. End user licenses. Let's put that under B category. Um, what I want to happen here is I, I really don't want to see late fee ever. And I try to inactivate it and I get a warning here that says this product or service can't be deleted because it's used as a default item. 
for late fees. Okay, so I want to create an invoice and I want late fees to be at the very bottom of the list here. So my goal is to try to do that by putting it into the Z category. Okay, let's see how it's it's uh, going right now when I do the plus new. Um, I need to actually do a quick categorize of one more and put something else in here. Let's put services under category A, save and close. Okay, plus new invoice. And you can see that it is working right here, how late fee populates here. Yeah, two more that's not categorized. And so if you are gonna create categories, it would probably be smart to um, categorize everything that makes sense because we can run these great reports here, sales by product summary or detail, but let's go with the summary and uh, do last year. Okay, you can start to see how we have a subtotal, 258,000 in category A, and, and so forth. And so anything that's not part of a category um, will just show up, you know, under under the product itself here. I guess we let me do all dates because there should be a couple more, I believe, that came in here. Perhaps not. Let's see. Go back to product services. Training. Okay, so training and training DVDs here. Lastly, let's put those in. And if you want, you can click the gear icon and you can say group by category. So that would be very helpful. That's really handy or your group by category on the little baby gear. While you're there, it's good practice to just do a double check. Make sure all your income counts are mapped properly. Any expense accounts that you have appearing as double-sided items, you'd want to appear as well. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so it shows you everything where it belongs in these these categories here okay so when we click finally we click one more time invoice this training dvds here really that is interesting because the training dvds here looks like it's in category b right so we click edit but it's not so um, I, it's bizarre kind of how to me how that is in that group. I'm going to move it to A to see what happens here. So now it's up in A, but when we take out the category and it's not categorized at all and hit save and close, it falls in here. So it's got something happening here. It must, I never really understood that. Here it is right here, training DVDs right here. You can see there's no category below it. And so I think the way this, how this is, this works is it sorts it by category first and then alphabetical if it's not categorized within, so. Uh, it, this would come before the Z, it must be. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, I am tempted to go a little bit deeper here and just, I'm just curious about how subcategories work. So let's say we're setting up a new service item and we wanted it to be part of a subcategory. You can't create subcategories here. So you would have to go back out to the all the list and click on product categories and then edit one of the categories to be a subcategory. So for example, let's say that we have software is a subcategory of B. There's that. 
So you can start to see how that's how subcategories work internally. Do one more category here. We'll do training subcategory B. Can't use train out because it already exists. It's interesting because I have a product name called training. I can't do that. So uh, okay, call it in person. There we go. And now to go back to the product services, let's categorize the training here to be in person. All right. So now when we hit plus new invoice, we're going to start to see that we have a sub category here. And that's what it looks like here. It has a greater than symbol pointing to it. <laughs> Pretty neat. And I should be able to get a roll up as well as a, as a, if I do that sales by product summary. Notice uh, all dates. Notice within group A, uh, we only have one, but within group B right here, we have a subcategory of training. So I actually get the a, a breakdown of those right in here for that particular one here. So very interesting, very deep here, and it obviously would take a lot of, could take a lot of thinking involved <laughs> and so forth here. I also see a deleted item here, PayPal item here. So um, that means that it's just been inactivated. If I want to see any inactivated products, I, I would need to go back here to the product services tab, click the little baby gear and say, uh, in, oh, sorry, it's not here. This is, it's here, status, active, inactive, and then if I needed to roll it back in, I could make active for any of these here, but not necessarily today. Okay, thank you guys for watching this. I hope it was helpful. Um, feel free to make a comment in the chat and, or the YouTube description below on any questions you have. And if you have any questions, you can also email me at stevechase at sequentiasolutions.com.